You can go to no other higher force than that. Or authority. I don't like to use the word force. I can't think of quite what to say. No higher authority than God. And so when you pray, that is for someone else, you are actually praying a prayer of love on behalf of them. You know, Jesus prayed that. You know, he gave us that example. John chapter 17, he gave us that example. He spent the entire, almost the entire chapter, he was praying on behalf of you. He says in verse 9, he says, My plea is not that the world but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All of them, since they are mine, belong to you. You have given them back to me for every, everything else of yours, so that they might be my glory. Now I am leaving the world, and I am leaving them behind. This is a prayer. And coming to you, Holy Father, keep them in your own care, all you have given me, so that they will be united just as we are, and none missing. During my time here, I have... I have kept safe within your family, all you have given me. I have guarded them. Not one perished except the, except the son of hell, as the scriptures foretold. And now I'm coming to you. I'm going to go to verse 20. I'm not praying these alone, but also for the future believers who come to me because of the testimony of these. Did you see that? What was Jesus praying for at that point? He's praying for you. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus was praying for you. My prayer for all of them is that they will be one in heart and mind. You know, even Jesus knew there would be church conflict all the way back then. He says, I'm praying that they might be one. Do you know there is uh, 65,000 denominations in the world? Isn't that amazing? And many denominations, not all, but many of them, split over insignificant things. And, and so here we have Jesus knowing that there will be conflict. He says, I'm praying on behalf of you, and I'm praying that you might be one, just as you and I are one. Father, Just that just you are in me, and I am in you, so they will be in us, and the world will believe in you. He's praying for you. Wow. That's a prayer petition. A prayer petition uh, usually focuses on two areas. You notice what I say, usually. It usually focuses on the physical and the personal needs, and it usually focuses on the spiritual needs. And, uh, and so, usually, and I put it at the beginning, a lot of times we go to prayer on behalf of somebody else because of physical needs. I pray for so-and-so that's in the hospital. I'm on a, there's an app, I got a brand new computer because mine was dying. And so I decided I'd go and buy one. And I got the Windows 8. <laughs> Everybody's groaning when you hear that. It takes a while to get used to it, I'll tell you. It's a, it's a hybrid between a, uh, uh, an Android and a computer. and uh, it's, it, it takes a while to get used to it. But I found an app, and it's called a Bible, audio Bible app. And so what I do is, um, is, a lot of times, if you come in the office uh, during the morning, it's, it's pretty quiet in the office, but it's not really. Because I got my headphones on, Chet's got his headphones on, and sometimes Carol turns her music on. But uh, because I'm listening to something else, and he's listening to something else. And, well, a lot of times I'm, I'm listening to that radio Bible app, and it's uh, you go through the year where somebody's reading the Bible to you. And it takes, it takes about an hour, but he's, about, a half, about a half an hour of it is actually is uh, reading scriptures. And then he has a little five-minute devotional, and then the rest of it is prayer requests from all over the nation that people are bringing in and asking for prayer. The majority of those prayer requests are physical needs. Now, am I saying that's wrong? No. Look at the scriptures. How many people went to Jesus and they had a physical need? How many lepers went to Jesus? How many paralytics that went to Jesus? So it's, it's okay to pray for the physical needs. But I, I just find it interesting. That seems to be the number one one we pray for. Pray for me or pray for my neighbor because they're having surgery or they're, something like that. But what about the spiritual needs? When was the last time you prayed for somebody on behalf of their spiritual needs? Maybe you must have children that have walked away from the Lord. Every day you're praying for their spiritual needs. What's the greatest need that we have? Spiritual. Just 
spiritual. That's the greatest need. What's the need that will last for an eternity? It's spiritual. This body of mine is wasting away. I'm finding out as I hit the big five I went to my wife the other day. She's laying on the floor. I said, sneak up on her and kiss her on the forehead. You know? And I went down and I, I went down and, and crack, crack. Well, so much for that little sneaky little thing. I mean, the body is wasting away, but the spiritual will not. It was the last time we prayed and prayed and prayed on behalf of somebody. And we said, God, I pray that you'll just be home. I pray, I pray. I pray for their salvation. I pray. What about the Bible says that we're supposed to pray for our enemies? How many of us pray for our enemies? That's a prayer petition. We pray for our enemies. <clears throat> Not that God smites them, but we pray that God will save them. That's a hero of the faith. We pray in the prayer of petition. The prayer of petition must also have a willingness to accept God's will. We know that there are some things that are scriptural. That God, we know there are a number of things that are God's will, because the Bible comes right on and says it. So it's open and continue to pray. I don't think we need to pray, Lord, I pray, if it be your will, that Craig Cuffelberg be saved. Well, we know God desires for Craig Cuffelberg to be saved. He is sick. Don't worry about it. He wouldn't be an elder. Okay. So, but, but we pray, Lord, I pray uh, on behalf that I pray that, that you'll send your Holy Spirit. I pray. Matter of fact, if you remember a long time ago, the prayer at the altar used to be prayers of, Lord, I pray that you will make Craig Cuffelberg so miserable that he'll come to you. That's how they used to pray. Because a lot of times people will not change until they hurt enough. That used to be the prayer of petition. And so we pray that God's will be done. So we do know, here's, here's just a list of some of the things that we do know God's will. That you will be saved. That uh, His praise and glory will come about. So Lord, I pray that your praise and glory will be shown upon this world if it be your will. No. We know it's His will. Um, that we live in His grace, if it be now. That we might be obedient to Him. We know that that's His will. So Lord, I pray for Greg Kufferberg that He will be obedient to you in this area, if it be your will. We don't need to pray that. But we do need to pray. So Lord, I pray that Craig will be obedient to you. Um, give graciously, pray unceasingly, Keep sane and sober. Bear fruit. Be it your servant. Not conform to this age. Uh, hear your calling. Do not repay evil for evil. Pray uh, Pray for my brothers. Uh, be tough and be patient. Be part of the family of God. Uh, try to save your brother. Abstain from immorality. To be wise. All those we know are God's will. So we don't need to say, if it be your will. We don't need to do that. Because we know that is God's will. And so it is okay, and I think it's still important that we pray that prayer on their behalf. Lord, I pray for the salvation of so and so. When was the last time we continued to pray? In fact, to go deeper, Lord, I'm begging you to, for my son, daughter, my twins, whatever, they, they might come to know you. See, you are enlisting the highest level of spiritual prayer. You need to ask, yes, what is God's will in this situation? Because there are times that our will and His will don't match up. We do know that these are His will. But what about when we're praying for direction? Lord, I'm praying for Your will in my life, that You will give me direction. Sometimes it's a prayer to deliver us. Sometimes it's a prayer to help us to go through the fire. We have 33 North Koreans that if they have not been executed now, they'll be executed sometime unless God intervenes. Why? Because they're Christian. It was all, all, all over AOL last week. 33 Christians are going to be executed in North Korea. Now, God didn't deliver them, yeah, but how many times has God said, go through the fire and receive the ultimate deliverance, which is eternity with me? Sometimes we know His will, and our prayers are to affirm that will, as I said before. We know what His will is. His will is always to use us for His honor and His glory. 
notice how that changes. It's that prayer of Jabez. I, Lord, I pray that you will increase my... I can't remember. I've got to look it up. But it's for your glory and your honor. And there is a willingness to accept and respond to his will. The highest form of spiritual maturity is accepting God's will. And, that's, and that changes our, our idea when it comes to the prayer of petition. Because we change it from us to them. Challenge of the week. Pray the prayer of petition on behalf of others. In the advancement of God. I didn't give a challenge to this service last week. Uh, I gave it to the second service, and so I sent an email out. You remember that email I sent? It said, I'm doing the challenge! And I was just curious to see how many people remember what the challenge was. That's why I kept it very vague. But I, eventually, I had too many people say, oh, America goes to the snow, what was the challenge? Okay, let me tell you the challenge. The challenge was to take $5, put it in your pocket, and allow God to, to bring it to you, what to use it for this week. So, listening to what people say, and if they that challenge. Here's, here's, here's the result of the challenge. One person came up to me and said, and I got permission to share this. I was at a, at a restaurant and I was talking with the waitress. And there was another customer there that was very rude to the waitress. In fact, the person screamed out, when are you going to serve me? You may have been a waitress. You ever have that? Then, uh, by the way, Christians, before I finish this, we should never do that. We should never do that. Molly and I were at uh, a conference one time, and the hotel screwed up, and they overbooked the hotel and everything else. And I watched the Christians down at the, at the, the checkout desk just chewing out the desk. We should never. Yeah, we should stand our ground. Don't get me wrong. There are times when you say, hey, you don't want to talk. But it's you know. Anyway. So, um, the waitress, oh, okay, and she came on, I'm sorry. And, and, and he goes, says a few words I'm not going to say. But you're not going to give a tip. That's so loud so everybody could hear. And she did the right thing. She served them and took care of them and everything else. And continued to serve and take care of the church members. And on the way out, there were definitely, I don't know if the Lord spoke to the church person what it was, but the church person stopped, turned around, called the waitress back, and said, he might not give you the tip, but I'm going to double tip you to pay on his behalf. And she started crying. So we can have a story like that next week. Pray the prayer of the on behalf of others in the advance of God's name. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your showing us and may you be with us today and bless and be upon us and upon this time. And above all, may we pray a prayer of petition on behalf of others. In Jesus' name. Amen. We would like, uh, as we, the prayers are our emphasis here, and what we'd like you to do is if you feel the need for any prayer, or even the prayer of praise. After the worship services, the elders are going to be up here for you, for them to pray for you. So feel free to come up, and we'll pray for you. Okay? All right. God bless you all. We'll see you in Sunday school. And uh, be thankful we have those. God bless you.